After making all these preparations, Harry started to explore the depths of the underground cave. But just as he was about to take a step, he heard a sound coming from above his head. Harry was shocked. He immediately extinguished the torch that he had just lit and hid himself in the darkness. He raised his head and looked at what was happening in the vertical cave above him. He felt that those natives might have come to check on him. If the torch was still burning, it would be difficult for them to see that he had left the cage. Harry saw two heads, one big and one small, sticking out. Callie, little muse. Harry was surprised when he saw who it was. Ah, Harry, you are indeed down there. Callie was very surprised. After she and Little Muse entered this terrifying devil cave, they were very surprised to find that there was nothing terrifying in this cave. The entire cave wasn't very deep, and there were torches on both sides of the cave. After looking around, Callie did not see where Harry was. At first, Callie thought she had found the wrong cave. However, she soon found that the cover on the ground did not fit with the rest of the stone, and there was a rope wrapped around the top of the cover. It was obvious that there was another world underneath. She and Little Muse used all their strength to push the cover away. Sure enough, they found a cave below. Just as she was hesitating about whether Harry would be down there or if she should go down and look for him, Harry's movement came from below, making Callie pleasantly surprised. She shouted at Harry, I will put down the rope right now and save you. Okay, but be careful. This cave is very deep. Don't fall down, Harry reminded. He was even more excited. He did not expect the cover to be so heavy that he had no way out. Just as he was worrying about how to get out of this place, Callie appeared in time. If they were two minutes late, they would have missed Harry after he went into the depths of the cave. This was great. It was much better to go up the same way he had come down. The rope hung down from above. Harry was quite curious about how Callie and Little Muse managed to escape and find him, but he also knew that now was not the time to ask. It was not too late to talk about it in detail after going up. Throwing down the bundle of wooden sticks on his back, Harry grabbed the rope and began to climb up with all his might. Callie and Little Muse also tried to pull him up. Just as he climbed to the top, his head was already out. Before Harry could rejoice, he suddenly heard a commotion coming from outside the cave. Not good, they are chasing us, Callie said nervously. Who is it, the Mountain King? Harry asked. What should we do? There is only one exit in this cave. We have been blocked. Callie nodded and did not explain further. Harry knew how many subordinates the King of the Mountain had. He could not deal with them with just himself, Callie, and a child. We found them here. Take them down, yelled a guard. Capture the murderer of the King, shouted another. Harry saw that he could not wait to surrender, so he gritted his teeth and said, Hold me. Callie and Little Muse did not know what was going on, but they still subconsciously jumped into Harry's arms and tightly hugged him. The moment before the pursuers got close, Harry stomped his feet, grabbed the rope, and quickly landed. He brought Callie and Little Muse back to the cave below. The pursuers were obviously stunned when they saw them fall. Some of them even showed frightened expressions. The leader at the front saw Harry jump into the cave, and a mocking smile appeared on his face. Hmm, you actually jumped into the devil's cave on your own accord. Leader, are we still going to chase after him? The subordinate beside him asked in a weak voice. Do you dare to go down there? The leader cursed. I don't think that's a good idea. That's right. Cut the rope and then use the stone to crush the cover, the leader ordered. The group of subordinates immediately started to move. They cut the rope that was suspended in the air and then covered it tightly with a stone to make it firm. Without the rope, it was impossible to climb up. Even if they climbed up, it was even more impossible to push open the cover again. Harry and the others were blocked in the underground cave. They looked up and saw that the cover had been blocked again. The light above had also disappeared. Harry let out a sigh. I'm back here again. And this time, he really didn't have a chance to go up at all. It was simply impossible to return to the cave above without any reinforcements. Furthermore, the exit above their heads was firmly blocked. Harry recalled the screams of the pursuers and asked, Callie, did you really kill that king of the mountains? Harry did not expect Callie to have such a fierce side. Such a tough man was once a boxer, a person who tyrannized the wilderness. He actually died at the hands of Callie, it was unbelievable. Callie was still in shock as she lay in Harry's arms and nodded. I threw the electric batter into the water while he was bathing. Harry was speechless and silently mourned for the Mountain King for two seconds. Being electrocuted to death while soaking in the water, that feeling was probably very pleasurable. You two didn't fall, right? Harry patted their backs again and asked, No. 
I'm all right. Callie and Little Muse shook their heads at the same time. This was a blessing in the midst of misfortune. Just now, something urgent happened. Harry slid down the rope very quickly. If it wasn't for the fact that he had come down once and knew the depth of the cave, Harry would have landed hard, possibly even breaking one or both of his legs. Now we are trapped here. What should we do? Callie asked, and then sniffed. She immediately vomited in disgust. What's the smell? Little Muse also did not feel any better and also started to vomit. It really stinks. It's like a rotten animal that died in the forest, Harry said helplessly. I'll light the torch. Don't be scared when you two see the things in front of you. The reason Harry wanted to warn Callie and Little Muse in advance was because they were girls after all, and Little Muse was only eight or nine years old. Without any mental preparation, something as shocking as these creatures would be hard for anyone to see for the first time. These things had a very disgusting appearance. Sure enough, when Harry lit up the torch and saw that there were a bunch of strange things lying under her feet, Callie was so scared that her entire body twitched. But she had always been calm. Although she was scared, she did not show it too clearly. As for Little Muse, Harry originally thought that this child would be scared to the point of screaming. When she saw the creatures lying on the ground, she was indeed shocked, but she immediately covered her mouth and stared at Harry with her big eyes. She asked in a low voice, Big brother, how did these goo die? Harry was very curious. What did Little Muse mean by goo? It seemed like Little Muse knew about these creatures. He replied, I killed them, and I also stabbed two of them to death. What does goo mean? What is the name of these things? Callie also felt very strange. She lowered her head and communicated with Little Muse in her native language. Then she said to Harry, Little Muse and the people here call these things goo. In our words, it is the demon infant. Harry frowned. Demon infant? These things live underground. How did Little Muse and the others know about them? Callie talked to Little Muse for a while and said, These people are sworn enemies with the natives here. They often sneak out from underground and attack the isolated natives. And they, they... Callie said and could not continue. Harry asked, What happens to them? These things like to eat people, and they like to eat them alive. Callie endured the discomfort and said, Harry frowned too. What kind of creature is this? Is it not human? Now that Harry and the others were trapped in this underground cave, they could not find a good way to get out for a while. Moreover, there were many so-called goo here, and it was also a danger that couldn't be ignored. Therefore, Harry wasn't in a hurry to explore the way. At the very least, he had to figure out the situation of these disgusting things first. Otherwise, if he brought the two girls into the depths of the cave and got ambushed, he wouldn't be able to protect everyone. Callie was also very curious when she heard Harry's question. As a genius scholar who liked to study, she naturally wanted to study this unknown creature. Unfortunately, there was no good way to study the bodies in this dark cave. Therefore, Callie could only endure the pungent smell and use a wooden stick to poke the corpses of these monsters. From time to time, she would even open their eyelids and pry open their mouths to take a look. Looking at it so closely, Harry, who was standing by the side and watching, was stunned. He hurriedly took out his wet towel and wrapped it around Callie's nose and mouth, then took out another wet towel and covered it for Little Muse. Little Muse very sensibly declined. Big brother, you should wear it. I don't need it. Harry smiled. This is for you. As for me, I am already used to it. In the beginning, Harry was indeed not used to this smell. However, after almost escaping and coming back for the second time, Harry found that he did not mind this smell much. He had already gotten used to this smell. Harry's heart was filled with sadness. Callie studied it for a while and finally stood up and said, This is undoubtedly a type of primate mammal. As for whether it is similar to the orangutan gene or the human gene, it is still hard to say now. Just from the appearance alone, I think that the latter is more likely, Harry said in surprise. What? This thing is some kind of early human. There's no mistake, right? I can see that each and every one of them is like an alien. Callie shook her head and said, The genetic similarity does not necessarily reflect on the appearance, just my deductions. I am not sure yet. Harry smiled and said, I don't care whatever it is. Since they are already dead, let's not bother about them anymore. We need to find a way out of this cave. Callie nodded. You are right. We do not have many resources with us. If we stay here for too long, we will be in danger. Harry smiled bitterly. But it is also very dangerous to walk forward. These things seem to be able to see things clearly in the darkness. We are naturally restricted in the underground cave. 
At this time, little Muse suddenly opened her mouth and asked, Big Brother, you said you just stabbed two of them to death? Harry said, Yeah, despite how small they are, they have quite a lot of strength. It took a lot of effort to kill these two. Little Muse continued to ask with a frightened expression, Then did these two howl before they died? Harry scratched his head and said, Yes, they screamed like banshees. It was a horrible noise. Little Muse was so scared that tears almost flowed out of his eyes. He said to Harry, Big Brother, let's leave this place as soon as possible. Why? Harry asked, puzzled. Before they die, they will shout for their companions and call for a large group of them. I think they will be here soon. Little Muse panicked. After hearing this, Harry remembered that he had heard wails coming from the depths of the cave, and his heart tightened. If it was really as Little Muse had said, then he would really have to run away quickly. Harry wanted to leave this place as soon as possible, but the problem was that there was only one passage. No matter how he walked, it seemed like he would inevitably bump into a horde of those beasts. Therefore, Harry looked at Callie and asked, Callie, how many big firecrackers do you have in your bag? Callie said, 18, Harry murmured. Including my 12, there are a total of 30 of them. I'm going to stake it all. I'll just walk from here and blow them up when I meet them. Little Muse didn't know what big firecrackers were, but when she saw strange creatures lying on the floor, she had inexplicable respect for the big firecrackers that Harry had mentioned. To be able to beat a bunch of them to death, her new big brother is really amazing. Little Muse naturally placed the credit of the big firecrackers on Harry. In her eyes, only someone who kills this kind of goo could be called a great hero. Unfortunately, she didn't know how flustered Harry was when he first met these monsters. If Callie hadn't prepared the big firecrackers in advance, these monsters would have torn Harry apart and skinned him alive. Harry and the other two carried the special bone knives made with the help of the tribe. Therefore, Harry used the wooden sticks on the ground to make two long spears and gave them to Callie and Little Muse. When they entered the depths of the cave, they would use large firecrackers to open up a path when they met resistance. Those who had not been killed by the explosion, they would attack with their spears. After he finished preparing the equipment and carried the bundle of wood as fuel for the torch, Harry brought Callie and Little Muse and prepared to set off. He turned around and saw that Callie was still squatting on the ground and studying the dead monsters. Harry urged, Don't look anymore. What's there to study about these things that stink? Callie said, I want to bring one with me to carefully study this kind of creature. In this kind of underground dark environment, the cave dwellers are very strange. They belong to a species that has never been discovered and are very valuable for research. Harry was unconvinced. Callie, we are running for our lives now. It would be good if we could walk out alive. We won't have time to carry around a dead body. But this is really a very precious specimen, Callie said very regretfully. For someone who was focused on research, there was nothing more exciting than discovering a new species. Although Callie spent most of her time researching materials, electronics, and mechanical engineering, she also dabbled in biology and genetics. It was just that she rarely showed it because she did not need it. Now that she had encountered such a strange creature like these underground monsters, Callie really wanted to bring it back and study it properly. She found that this species seemed to be very sociable, and it seemed that its intelligence wasn't low either. Harry would not let her take such a smelly thing with them. Putting aside the fact that it was dead, it would be inconvenient to carry it around with her weight. Thus, Harry steeled his heart and pulled Callie forward. Callie took two steps and turned her head three times, unexpectedly revealing a reluctant look. Harry looked at her and could not help but laugh. That's enough. At most, when we're safe, I'll send someone to catch a few of them alive so that you can study them. Callie's eyes lit up. Will you keep your word? Of course I keep my word. Little Muse, who was listening to Callie and Harry, couldn't help but shiver. What kind of people were these? This kind of terrifying thing actually wanted to capture them alive? Muse thought. The three of them walked along the cave smoothly. They did not encounter any sneak attacks from any beasts. Although the cave was dark and damp, it was surprisingly not stuffy. Harry and Callie both determined that there must be another passageway leading to the outside. With this understanding, Harry and the other two were very excited. Originally, they were very pessimistic and thought that this cave only led deeper into the mountain. That would mean that there would be no way out. Now it seemed like as long as they searched carefully, they would definitely be able to walk out. However, good times did not last long. After walking along the winding passageway for a long time, the three of them finally encountered a fork in the road. 
The cave ahead was split into three separate corridors, and the interior was still pitch black without a single bit of light. Harry was a little disappointed. If there were too many branches in the cave, it would be as complicated as a maze. Testing each corridor individually could have them turn around and end up lost in the mountain. They had enough food for a while, but what was in the bag right now could last for four or five days. If they were to rest, they could take turns to rest and be on alert in order to prevent the creatures from jumping out and launching a sneak attack. But the most important thing was the light from the torch. The wood on Harry's back was used up very quickly as a torch. When the torch was used up, only the oil lamp in Harry and Callie's bag was left. The oil lamps would last a while as they consumed their fuel much slower than the torches. But at most, it would be used up in a day's time. Once the light was gone, then the three of them would become blind. That would be the most dangerous and fatal moment. Harry had been feeling strange along the way. He kept wondering why the beasts had not chosen to attack yet. It was as if he had never seen them before, causing him to think that he was hallucinating. Harry felt that there were always a lot of eyes staring at him in the dark where the torch could not reach. It made Harry feel very uncomfortable and scared. Now that they had encountered three separate tunnels, they would have to choose. If they had chosen the right path, they could walk out before the light ran out. Once they chose the wrong path and got lost in this dark underground maze, they would truly be doomed beyond redemption. At this time, Harry did not dare to make a random choice or simply try his luck. This was a big matter that concerned the life and death of the three of them, and they had to be careful. Therefore, Harry decided to let Callie voice her opinion. Which path do you think is suitable? Harry asked. Callie was very confused and asked, Why did you ask me? Harry spread his hands. You are a bookworm. You might be able to tell which path leads to the outside. Can you? However, Callie did not give him any face. Sorry, I can't. You can't joke around at this time, Harry said helplessly. Callie shook her head. There is no obvious difference between the three tunnels. There is no obvious sign of airflow either. Maybe there is, but I can't detect any subtle flow, so I can't make a decision. Harry could only continue to think of a way. The three of them had to stay together. Otherwise, once they were separated, those who were alone would definitely be eaten by those monsters. Just as Harry was in a dilemma, a strange howl suddenly came from a cave. Along with the sound, the strange movements could be heard behind them. Harry was shocked. There was only one path that they had taken just now. There was no fork in the road. Where did these monsters come from? Was it really as Little Muse had said? These things appeared and disappeared unpredictably? Harry thought. After a short while, strange howls could be heard from another fork in the road. It was followed by a rumbling sound. Judging from the sound, it was obvious that there were quite a number of strange creatures coming after them. This time, Harry didn't have to make a decision. There was only one path that did not have any noise. Only one path was quiet. He didn't have to worry about choosing that path anymore. They had already made a decision for Harry. Without any hesitation, Harry immediately pulled Callie and Little Muse into the tunnel in the middle. In order to get away from the creatures, the three of them ran all the way. In the middle of the tunnel, they even fell a few times due to the wet floor. However, not long after they ran, Harry bitterly discovered that they had encountered the worst situation. This underground cave was indeed incomparably complicated. There were all kinds of diverged tunnels everywhere. Not long after they ran, they immediately ran into another fork in the road. This time, there were four separate tunnels. However, Harry did not have to worry about choosing carefully anymore. The creatures kept chasing after them. The sound of these things could be heard from several forks in the road. He could only choose to keep running down the tunnel that did not have any noise. Through this new path, they came to another five paths. Harry felt like he was going crazy. Now it was impossible for Harry to go back the way he came because after going through these few paths, he could no longer remember which path he took. He could only bite the bullet and continue going deeper. As for whether he could escape or not, whether he could live or die depended on luck. If he really ran to a dead end, they would catch up to them from behind. Harry had made up his mind to kill as many of these creatures. He had been chased all the way. He had no idea how far he had run and how many paths he had taken. In any case, this underground cave maze successfully made Harry lose his sense of direction. Harry wasn't sure if he was running in circles or not, but he was running anyway, avoiding those strange things running after them. Callie was out of breath as she panted. Harry wasn't any better. He was also sweating profusely. Little Muse was a little better. After all, 
This child grew up in an Aboriginal tribe. She had been running all over the place since she was young. She also had talent in terms of physical strength. Harry felt that it was not possible to continue running like this. It was very difficult for him to confirm whether he was running in circles in this underground maze. If that was really the case, even if he ran to his death, he would not be able to leave this place. If he continued running like this, it wouldn't take long for the three of them to be exhausted. No matter how good little Muse's condition was, she was still a child after all. Right now she was panting heavily, as if she couldn't hold on any longer. No, we can't run like this for much longer, Harry said while breathing heavily. But those things are right behind us. Callie was also not able to catch her breath. At this time, little Muse pointed in front of him and said in surprise, Big brother, sister, I think I saw a light in front of me. What? said Harry. Really? said Callie. Harry and Callie looked up in surprise. There was light, which meant they were headed outside. It also meant that they were about to leave this place. Harry carefully looked over and found that in the darkness far away, there was a vague light. It was probably because of the distance. That was why if he stood in his position and looked over, he wouldn't be able to see it if he didn't look carefully. It was only because Little Muse was more careful and had good eyesight that she was able to see this undetectable light. Harry was excited and pulled the two of them, saying, Come on, let's get out of this horrid place. Wait, Callie stopped him. Hmm? What's wrong? Harry looked at her in confusion. Callie said faintly, When we fell into this underground cave, it was still midnight, right? Yes. Then do you think that we have already run here for the entire night and it is already dawn outside? Callie directly threw out the question. Harry was stunned. Indeed, they were exhausted from running just now, but it was not as exaggerated as running for the whole night. Perhaps moonlight or starlight could also illuminate a certain area. Moreover, in this pure black underground, as long as there was a bit of light, it would be very obvious. But Harry looked carefully and saw that the blurry light in front of him was not natural white light. Instead, it was a kind of faint blue light. Other than artificial light sources, natural sunlight and moonlight did not have this kind of color. Harry became alert. In this strange underground cave, strange things happened one after another. He had to be extremely careful. Do you want to go to the front and take a look? Callie asked. I think it's better to be careful. Shall we change the route? Harry did not want to take the risk. In an unknown place, every choice had to be carefully made. However, Little Muse, who was standing in front of Harry and on guard, pointed behind him and said, Big brother, sister, they have caught up. What? Harry turned pale with fright. When Harry turned around to look, he was shocked to find what was behind him. A large group of dark shadows blocked Harry's path of retreat. This time, they had quietly approached. In other words, these things could perfectly blend into the dark environment. It wouldn't make any noise. He had been tricked. This was the voice in Harry's heart. An intuition told him that these had purposely made a sound earlier and had deliberately chased the three of them into this passageway. Therefore, to the front, they must have some intention to force Harry to continue forward. And now, these beasts squeezed together stared at Harry and the other two with ferocious looks on their faces. However, because the torch in Harry's hand was still burning, it seemed to make them feel very afraid. That was why they stopped moving forward and waited quietly. Perhaps they had to wait until the moment the torch was extinguished. Perhaps it was to force Harry and the others to continue walking forward, to achieve some kind of secret goal that Harry did not know about. The situation could not be tolerated. Harry could not make up his mind for a moment. In the end, he had to use a large firecracker to blow up these monsters and return the way he came, or should he save his strength and go towards the unknown light ahead? Harry did not have time to think about the pros and cons. He quickly made a decision. The number of these monsters was unknown. He could not tell how many there were. It was hard to tell if the big firecrackers in his hands were enough. Therefore, it was a risky move to kill his way out. He continued to walk forward and see what the blue light was. After making up his mind, Harry pulled Callie and Little Muse and walked forward firmly. What surprised Harry was that the monsters behind them still followed step by step. After that, they gradually stopped, as if there was a red line on the ground that stopped them. They were unwilling to chase after Harry anymore. This situation was very strange, but Harry had no time to think about it, because the light ahead was getting brighter. They were in shock at what they had stumbled upon. Sure enough, this was not an exit. What appeared in front of them was a wide underground space. It was not man-made, but naturally formed. This space was about 20 meters tall, and it was shaped like a football. The depth was about 70 to 80 meters, and the widest was 40 to 50 meters. 
There was nothing strange about the underground space here, and the natural terrain of the cave was not uncommon either. The key was that in this space there were stones emitting blue light everywhere. What was even more shocking was that many of the stones were floating in the air. Without any support, they just floated in the air, emitting a faint blue light. Seeing this scene, Harry almost bit off his tongue, thinking that he had arrived in space. There were countless glowing stones in front of him, big and small. The big ones were the size of a basketball, and the small ones were the size of rice grains. Just like that, they floated and rotated in this space, like a nebula in the universe. It was like a dream. What is this place? After a long time, Harry finally found his voice and asked a question. Callie did not say a word and slowly walked inside. Seeing the situation, Harry pulled her back. What are you doing? Don't be rash, Harry said solemnly. Callie said as if she had lost her soul. Superconductivity levitation. I never knew they could occur naturally like this. Harry could understand superconductivity suspension, but he could not understand it. The only thing he knew was that Callie must have found something extraordinary, which was why she became so excited. Don't be agitated. Let's slowly observe whether it is safe inside before going in. Harry still pulled Callie and did not let her go in. As for little Muse, she made Harry worry. This child had been stunned on the spot for a long time. It was as if she had seen the most beautiful thing in the world, and a dazed look appeared on her face. She muttered to herself, So beautiful. This place is so beautiful. Harry pulled Callie, put out the torch, and looked inside carefully. Because of these glowing stones, he no longer needed the torch to illuminate the place. He did not know why. These stones would light up, and the light they emitted was even brighter than the light. Countless stones illuminated this underground space in detail. With a single glance, he could see everything. After discovering that there was nothing else inside other than these strange stones, Harry felt relieved and walked in with Callie and Little Muse. Harry was looking around the large area. Although reflecting Moon Island was also a magical place compared to this place, it had its own merits. The two of them were equally matched. However, in Harry's opinion, this place was actually a little more wonderful. In Callie's eyes, it had gradually become fanatical. Superconductivity materials. There are actually superconductivity materials that are naturally formed. Oh my God, oh my God. Callie, who had always been calm and composed, actually lost her composure at this moment. Looking at these glowing stones, it was as if she was looking at the most wonderful thing in the world. Callie, Callie, wake up, what exactly is going on? Harry shook Callie's shoulder and asked. Callie finally came back to her senses after Harry shook her violently. She said excitedly, this is the biggest discovery in the world. The fusion power I'm going to make is waiting for a breakthrough like this. Harry was stunned for a moment and then he gradually became happy. From the beginning, Callie's goal was to build practical fusion power generation technology. However, there was a problem that couldn't be solved. The fusion binding device needed superconducting materials. The superconductors she would need had to be able to withstand a lot of heat and pressure. The superconductors that could be manufactured could only be used at an extremely low temperature. It was simply unable to be used in conventional ways. Therefore, the superconducting material at a constant temperature was the core problem to completing fusion power generation. This problem has troubled the top scientists in the world for decades. There was no sign of a solution. And now, Harry and the others actually found a superconductive material with a constant temperature in this underground cave. This was simply a miracle. Callie wasn't the only one who wanted to be able to realize the application of fusion power. If they could successfully bring these stones away from this place, in the future, the artificial sun created by the fusion reaction would be shining with incomparable brilliance under Harry's support. This was another technology that could change the world. Harry was also excited. He did not expect to earn so much money with this technology. Instead, he thought about how humanity would no longer need to worry about energy consumption in the future. With fusion power, the energy supply was almost inexhaustible. Harry and Callie would become the pioneers of mankind's progress. What are you waiting for? Hurry up and pack it in your bag. Just fill as much as you can. Harry was so excited that his whole body was trembling. He was just about to reach out his hand when he was stopped by Callie. Don't move, there is radiation. Why didn't you say so earlier? Harry looked at the stone in his hand and dropped it quickly. Any ore that was glowing had some form of radiation which could be either strong or weak. The ore in Harry's hand also emitted radiation. After hearing Callie's warning, 
Harry was so scared that he let go and threw the stones out. But the strange thing was that the stones stayed in the air when Harry tried throwing the rocks. Such a strange scene shocked Harry. He felt that this place was really too strange. Why is it floating like this? Harry asked curiously. Callie pulled him back a little bit and said, These floating stones should be some kind of unknown ore, and they have superconductivity under normal temperature. Then why are they floating in the air? Harry was puzzled. Because there is a magnetic field here, Callie said. There was a strange magnetic field around the mountain. Callie had noticed this long ago. No matter what kind of compass or GPS it was, it would all malfunction if it was used around the mountain. Electronic devices would lose their function here. That was why, after so many years, there were countless people who could not leave after entering Savage Mountain. And the center of the abnormal magnetic field was this cave with all the glowing rocks. Otherwise, these superconducting ores would not be floating in the air, creating such a rare spectacle. Callie explained to Harry while checking his body condition. Fortunately, these superconducting ores did not belong to the strong radiation type, so Harry did not feel uncomfortable. Putting down his worries, Harry began to think about what had happened here. Why did those monsters chase them here? What was even stranger was why they did not dare to follow them into the room. Callie, on the other hand, had already started to collect the ores. Harry was so scared that he hurriedly stopped her. Didn't you say they were radioactive? Why do you still want to collect them? Callie was indifferent. She said lightly, It's fine. Didn't you touch it just now? This isn't the same thing, okay? I only touched it a little. You want to keep it in your equipment bag for a long time. Harry frowned. Callie shook her head. We need to bring a few pieces back and analyze them. These ores are rare specimens. Through analyzing the internal atomic arrangement structure, we might be able to synthesize and produce them in the future. There seemed to be a lot of superconducting ores in this cave, but the actual scale was not much. In order to complete a practical fusion reactor, the number of superconducting materials needed was too much. It wasn't something that could be satisfied with the ore here. Callie also believed that there weren't many natural materials in this world that could be used to produce superconducting ores at a constant temperature. It was hard to say whether they would be able to discover these things now. If they did not bring some with them and go back to analyze it, they might not even be able to find this cave the next time they came to the mountain. In other words, if she missed this opportunity, it would be very difficult to encounter it again in the future. Therefore, even if there was radiation, Callie did not care. Anyway, it was just a weak radioactive ore. If she could receive treatment quickly, it would not be a big problem. Only by synthesizing this kind of ore in the future could she provide large amounts of superconducting materials needed for the fusion reactor. Harry saw Callie come down and helplessly pulled her hand. Then let me do it. Don't move. Anyway, I have already touched these ores. As he spoke, he opened his backpack and put the medium-sized ores into it. Callie stood by the side and watched carefully. She pointed at the suitable ores for Harry and the purity was higher. Just like that, she picked up a bag full of ores. If it was placed in such a large number of ores, it would definitely be very heavy. Carrying them on his back would definitely be a burden. However, in this underground cave, these ores were originally floating. Thinking about this, it would not weigh him down like he thought. Instead, when Harry carried the bag on his back, the rocks began to float and almost made him feel lighter. Such a miraculous ore also made Harry interested. Picking up Little Muse, he placed her on top of the bag. Little Muse was only a seven or eight-year-old child and was a little heavy. After riding on his backpack, she flew up. Such a miraculous situation made Little Muse laugh. Harry and Callie also smiled. They had risked their lives to escape in this underground cave. Now they finally had a moment of relief. Unfortunately, they still had no idea how to get out. They could not see any other tunnel in this underground cave. He still couldn't find an exit. Just as the three of them relaxed a little, the ground suddenly trembled slightly. What's wrong, is there an earthquake? Harry turned pale with fright. It was not a good sign to have an earthquake here. They were in an underground cave and it was naturally formed. There was no reinforced structure of artificial materials. Once an earthquake occurred, the entire cave would collapse and they would be buried here alive. Little Muse was floating in the air above Harry's backpack but she did not feel any vibration. However, she could see that the floating oars in the underground cave were also shaking. Harry and Callie quickly looked around trying to find a safe place. Unfortunately, there was no safe place in the cave. If it really collapsed, there was no place to hide. 
It doesn't seem to be an earthquake. The tremors are too light, Callie said in puzzlement. Hmm? No? Harry had just finished speaking when he saw the ground in the middle of the cave suddenly ripple. Ripples appeared on the hard ground like water. In a moment, a pile of dirt appeared in the middle of the ripples. Then the dirt continued to rise at a speed visible to the naked eye. Something is coming out of the ground, Callie said. Of course, Harry could see it too, but he was not surprised. In this underground space, it wasn't strange for him to encounter anything. However, out of caution, he still pulled Callie and Little Muse back continuously. The speed at which the pile of dirt increased in size became faster and faster until there was a loud bang. The dirt and stones scattered in all directions. A long living creature rushed out from the ground. It was a monster that Harry had never seen before. It only existed in his imagination. It had a snake-like body, but it also looked like a super large earthworm. It was about two and a half meters in diameter. There was a large mouth part on its head, and there were countless layers of sharp teeth in it. Its body was covered with triangular scales. As part of the monster's body was still buried in the ground, Harry couldn't see how long it was. However, just by looking at the length of its body, he could see that it was more than 10 meters long. They were all stunned, especially Little Muse. She directly knelt down on the ground, her head heavily pressed against the hard and cold rock and muttered, Divine Spirit, spare us! Divine Spirit, spare us! We have no intention of offending you. Harry did not understand what the little girl said, but Callie reacted. Previously in Little Muse's tribe, she had been very concerned about the god that the tribe worshipped. On the stone altar in the tribe, there was a giant snake made of clay. That was the deity that the people of Little Muse's tribe feared and worshipped. Callie used to think that it was a snake, but now it seemed that it was not. It was the monster in front of her. After this huge monster rushed out of the ground, it opened its mouth and instantly swallowed a lot of the glowing rocks. After swallowing them, it actually extended its ferocious and terrifying mouth toward Harry and the other two. Harry's heart suddenly tightened. If he was eaten by this thing, the three of them would be torn apart under the countless teeth before they could even reach its throat. Although this unknown monster was large, its movements were not clumsy at all. It opened its mouth and attacked Harry and the other two with lightning speed. Luckily, Harry was not completely scared silly. He pulled Callie, who was thinking of something, and picked up Little Muse, who was kowtowing on the ground. He kicked with all his strength, and in the nick of time, he dodged the attack of this monster. Because of the dodging movement, the three of them lost their balance and fell to the ground. Fortunately, they were able to dodge the countless flying rocks. After the huge monster did not eat the three of them, it followed the momentum and crashed into the rock wall of the cave. What surprised Harry was that under such a huge impact, the monster was not injured at all. It even broke open a new tunnel in the rock wall. The monster didn't even turn its head. It just bit down on the wall and left through the newly dug tunnel. Along the way, the earth and stones were rolling and rumbling. The entire underground space was constantly shaking and making people unable to stand stably. When the shaking gradually calmed down, Harry estimated that the monster had also run far away. Only then did he stand up. He also helped Callie and Little Muse up. Looking at the brand new cave, the shock in Harry's heart could not be calmed down at all. Now he finally knew how this underground maze was formed. It was actually the trajectory left behind after the monster moved through the ground. Harry was also very curious about the existence of such a huge unknown monster in this place. But now, it was obvious that he wasn't investigating how this thing appeared. The existence of such a thing was 10,000 times more dangerous than those cave-dwelling monsters. It wasn't a good idea to stay here any longer. If that thing turned around, perhaps the three of them would become food. Harry finally understood why those monsters wanted to drive them here. He guessed that these monsters also regarded this monster as a god and worshipped it. They also treated Harry and the other two as sacrifices. Callie got up, patted the mud off her body and said, Let's go through this new tunnel. Harry was stunned for a moment. Why? This big thing had just passed by here. Isn't it very dangerous for us to follow it? Callie shook her head and said, No, it's the opposite. This monster's body is huge. It can't possibly turn around quickly. Harry thought for a moment and understood. The bigger the body, the more inflexible it became. Although this monster's speed is very fast, in this kind of underground environment, turning around is incredibly difficult. Following behind it was indeed the safest method. But there was still a very big problem. 
The three of them were going to leave this underground space. It was safe to follow behind the monster for the time being, but if they kept walking like this, it definitely wouldn't be possible. What if the monster was moving towards the depths of the earth? Wouldn't the three of them be even further away from the ground? Harry voiced out the doubts in his heart, but Callie pointed to the newly appeared tunnel and said, It won't be. This monster is moving upwards. Harry looked in the direction Callie was pointing at. As expected, because the ground was wet, there were traces of water in the new cave. At this moment, these traces of water that could be ignored if one did not look carefully were flowing in the opposite direction of the monster's movement. Due to the influence of gravity, the water was flowing toward the glowing rock room. Based on the current water traces, it was easy to tell that the new tunnel was heading toward the ground. Harry's eyes lit up, and his heart became excited. Finally, there is a hope of leaving. Let's hurry up and leave. As he spoke, he carried his backpack and pulled Callie and Little Muse into the cave. As they walked, they observed the traces of water that appeared along the way and found that they were indeed walking up. Harry was even more delighted in his heart. He was no longer worried that the monster would change direction and move underground. As for why the monster ran towards the surface, this was not something Harry could know. Anyway, as long as he could follow it out of this place, it would be great. After being stuck in this underground space for such a long time, Harry had long wanted to go out and take a breath of fresh air. Just like that, he walked along the narrow slope for an unknown period of time. Looking back, he could no longer see the underground space where the superconducting ore had appeared, and the place ahead was even more remote. The range of the torch's illumination was limited, and Harry did not know how long he would need to walk before he could see the sky. The efficiency of the monster digging holes. If he could tame this thing, he would not need to pay a lot of money for great underground infrastructure. If he placed this thing in the mountains, it wouldn't take long for him to dig a wide tunnel. Harry could not help but think of this unrealistic idea. One look, and one could tell that this thing was brainless. It was impossible to tame it just by controlling its instincts. As he walked, Harry also asked Little Muse about the god she was kneeling to. After figuring out a lot of information, it turned out that this thing had already existed in Savage Mountain. It was a god worshipped by all the natives, but it was very hard to see it on the surface. However, according to the legends passed down by the natives, as long as this thing appeared, it represented the arrival of a disaster. Harry naturally snorted in contempt when he heard this. It was just that the natives were ignorant. Besides the size of the monster, its destructive power seemed to be huge, but in front of a modern firearm, it might not be that formidable. No matter how hard the scales on its body were, Harry was positive it could not stop an armor-piercing round. If one couldn't pierce the scales, then two. If two did not work, then tens of thousands. It's just that I didn't react in time. Now that I think about it, if I threw all the big firecrackers on me into the mouth of this monster, I would have taken care of it just now. Harry patted the firecrackers that were tied up into a pile on his body and said, That was why Harry regretted not killing this monster in time. Callie, on the other hand, disagreed. If we had blown it up just now, we wouldn't have been able to leave the cave now. Harry smiled and nodded. That's true. I forgot that it dug this hole. Whether we can leave the cave or not, we still have to rely on this monster. They continued walking for about half an hour. Harry was about to finish burning the torch in his hand. Just as he was about to take out new wood to change, a gust of wind suddenly blew over. With a whoosh, the torch that was gradually weakening was extinguished. Harry raised his head in shock and looked forward. Only then did he realize that there was already a faint light in front of him. At this moment, the air blew past them in a rush, taking away the damp and rotten smell in the cave. The fresh and comfortable air made Harry feel that there was no more wonderful enjoyment in the world. They finally saw the hope of leaving. They had reached the end of the tunnel. Hurry up, hurry up, we are about to leave, Harry said in surprise. Without saying anything, he pulled Callie and Little Muse and ran into the rushing air. The light ahead was getting clearer, and they could already see the bright moonlight outside. When they reached the cave entrance, Harry suppressed his excitement and did not rush out. Instead, he held his breath and hid in the tunnel, carefully looking outside. This was the place where the monster had just passed by, and the outside was no longer the narrow underground space they were traveling in. He had to be on guard against the monster's ambush. After carefully observing for a while, Harry discovered that this tunnel entrance was located at the bottom of a valley's rock wall. Going out was the bottom of the valley, 
and the surroundings were still lush with vegetation. Even the rock wall was covered with all kinds of vines and plants. Little Muse, do you know where this is? Harry turned around and asked. Little Muse looked at the situation outside in confusion and shook her head very quickly. Harry sighed. He didn't expect a child to be able to recognize this place. Although Little Muse was a native here, the range of activity of a little girl was still limited. Then let's be careful when we go out. Try not to make too much noise, Harry instructed. Callie nodded and also said, be gentle when walking. The huge monster was active in the rocks and soil all year round. Obviously it did not have vision, but just because it did not have vision did not mean that it could not sense anything. Perhaps this monster used vibration to detect things on the ground. Although it was quiet outside, there was no trace of that thing. However, Harry did not dare to be careless. What if that thing just lay quietly on the ground and did not move? In a while, if the three of them were careless and were ambushed, they would die in an instant. After walking out of the cave, Harry did not intend to continue using the torch. Although it was still night outside, lighting the torch in the dense forest was inconvenient. The three of them carefully advanced forward, avoiding the branches that might make a sound if they stepped on them. Looking at the sky, Harry estimated that it should be around three or four o'clock in the morning. It was the darkest time of the night. However, the advantage was that it was almost dawn. When it was dawn, their speed would increase and they would be able to sense the danger in the surroundings more clearly. Just like that, they proceeded forward without knowing what was going on. They did not encounter the monster just now. Looking at the crushed plants on the ground, Harry also determined that the thing was heading in a certain direction. He finally let out a sigh of relief. He didn't have to worry too much. The three of them ran into a small river on the way and decided to go down the river. They walked out of the valley and came to the edge of a waterfall. Harry found that they were still on a higher ground because standing at the top of the waterfall, they were suddenly enlightened. With the help of the moonlight, they could clearly see the endless rainforest in front of them and not far away was actually the village of the previous king of the mountains. What shocked Harry even more was that at this moment, the village was in a sea of fire, and above the village was a huge airship. Several searchlights were lit in the cabin of the airship. The light beam swept back and forth on the ground. In the village below, countless people were fighting. This scene stunned Harry. It had only been one night, but the village was already in chaos. Harry couldn't understand what was happening in front of him, Obviously, there would never be any airships in a primitive village like Savage Mountain. The only possibility was that they had come in from the outside. That airship might be here to save us, or it might be those people from the Hugh family who came to capture us. Should we go and check it out? Harry asked with uncertainty. Callie also had a hard time making the decision. She said, What I'm curious about now is, why are they fighting? The intense battle in the village also made people puzzled. However, the person who said it did not have the intention to listen. Harry thought of something that Callie did not consider. His eyes lit up. My men and the people from the Hugh family are here, otherwise they would not have started fighting. At this moment in the village, even Harry could hear them. The sounds of various weapons firing were very frequent. Obviously, the villages didn't have modern weapons. If it was only Harry's subordinates or the people of the Hugh family, the natives wouldn't be able to cause such a big commotion. It wouldn't take so much effort to fight off the natives. It would be a massacre. And now, with such an intense exchange of fire, it could only mean that both sides had weapons. Fighting with each other would cause such a huge commotion. Let's go and meet up with them. Harry immediately made a decision in his excitement. He pulled Callie and Little Muse along and walked towards the bottom of the waterfall. In fact, the situation in the village was exactly what Harry had guessed. It was indeed June who had found them, as well as the people from the Hugh family. After June entered the wilderness, the people she led were divided into a dozen or so teams. As there was no way to communicate in the wilderness, the teams all acted on their own. Luckily, June accidentally discovered the small village that Harry had stayed in before. She directly drove the airship and hovered in the sky above the village. The natives in the village had never seen such a huge mechanical flying beast. They were so scared that they fell to the ground and did not dare to get up. They thought it was the descent of a god. June, who came to the village, could not communicate with these natives because of the language barrier. Fortunately, she saw some resources left behind by Harry and Callie. New modern items had appeared in these primitive tribes. June knew that Harry had stayed here. She finally understood that Harry and the others were taken away. June, who was both angry and anxious, 
immediately returned to the airship and followed the direction that the natives had pointed at to find the village of the King of the Mountains. However, as soon as she arrived, she found that the people from the Hugh family had also found the village. However, these people from the Hugh family had come from another direction. They had accidentally encountered the village of the Mountain King. After communicating with the leaders here, they found out about Harry's whereabouts. The people of the Hugh family were naturally overjoyed. After searching for so long, they finally found a clue about Harry. Unfortunately, before they could rejoice for too long, they found out that Harry and Callie were locked in the Devil Cave that the natives feared. According to the natives, those who entered the Devil Cave wouldn't come out alive. Immediately, the people of the Hugh family became anxious. They had come here to find Harry and capture him alive. The death of Harry was also a loss to the Hugh family, and they couldn't accept it. Just as they were about to bring more people to investigate the Devil Cave, June arrived. The huge airship flying in the sky was very obvious, and the people of the Hugh family naturally knew that it was Harry's subordinates who had found it. They immediately opened fire at the airship. They could not let Harry's men get ahead of them and save Harry. Losing Harry as a hostage was a fatal threat to the Hugh family. Therefore, the two groups of people immediately got into a fight. The battle was intense from the beginning. June followed the clues and found them. She didn't expect that the people of the Hugh family would appear here so soon, before she could figure out what was going on. Whether Harry was there or not, they had already been attacked by the Hugh family. The eleven bionic humans beside her jumped down from a few dozen meters high from the sky. The machines landed in the middle of the village. The enemies started a massacre. Although the people of Hugh family carried a large number of weapons with them, it was obvious that they were powerless to deal with a terrifying existence like the bionic humans. The battle turned one-sided, as the bionic humans ripped through the Hugh family as if they were not even there. They were forced to retreat in defeat. Unfortunately, this turn did not last long. When June's side had the upper hand, the ground suddenly shook. An unknown strong magnetic interference appeared. It was thousands of times more powerful than the interference they knew would come from the mountain. Although the bionic human's body was covered with a material that could block the interference, it was still an electronic machine in the end. The sudden strong magnetic interference immediately made the dozen or so bionic humans slow down. Their movements became sluggish. It was fatal to the intense battle situation right now. The people of the Hugh family seized the opportunity and started to fight back. They immediately turned the situation around and forced the bionic humans to retreat. Fortunately, June was still on the airship using long-range heavy weapons to support them, barely managing to maintain their position. With such a huge disparity in numbers, it wouldn't be a problem if the combat strength of the bionic human didn't decrease. But now, due to the interference of unknown magnetic forces, the combat strength of the bionic human had decreased. Fortunately, after fighting for so long, June could tell that the people from the Hugh family had not found Harry. Otherwise, the Hugh family would have already used Harry as a hostage and threatened his life to make June stop. This situation made June happy and worried. She was happy that Harry did not fall into the hands of the Hugh family. She was worried that Harry was not here. Those natives had clearly said that they had been taken to this village, but now they were nowhere to be seen. An uneasy feeling lingered in June's heart. She was afraid that she would find out that Harry had been killed by the indigenous people of this village. The moment this thought appeared in her mind, it made June tremble with fear. What June didn't know was that before she arrived here, the people of the Hugh family had already promised the leaders of this village great wealth. As long as the tribe brought them to the Devil Cave to find Harry, the family would bring these leaders out of the mountain and reward them with a large amount of money, allowing them to live a wealthy life. Most of the leaders here came here to hide and had no choice but to stay here and follow him. The previous king of the mountains had been running and used this leverage to keep them in the forest. Now that there was a chance to leave, they were tempted to take the money. Furthermore, the people of the Hugh family had promised to reward them with a large sum of money. Thus, the current situation was that they followed the Hugh family to deal with June. June's combat strength had decreased, and she was surrounded by two groups of people. But even if it was going to be a bloody defeat, she did not want to retreat. Harry had disappeared in Savage Mountain. It was not easy for her to find clues, so of course she could not back down. Once she was chased away by the people of the Hugh family, no matter what Harry's current situation was, she would lose the initiative. Harry, Callie, and Little Muse walked in the rainforest, stumbling as they approached the village. As Harry did not know that the airship in the sky was driven by June, 
he did not dare to get too close. He could only observe the situation inside the village carefully. When he saw the people from the village attacking the bionic humans together with those from the Hugh family, Harry was stunned for a moment. When he saw the airship flying toward the people of the Hugh family, Harry finally understood the situation. He immediately took out a large firecracker, lit it, and threw it into the sky. After an explosion, there was no response. Now the village was in chaos, and all kinds of weapons were exploding. On the airship, June continuously fired at the ground. A relatively weak explosion outside the village did not attract anyone's attention. Everyone's attention was focused on the battle in the village. Harry threw a firecracker at the sky outside. To the people fighting in the village, it was just a tiny bit of light. According to the number of people, the Hugh family should have an absolute advantage over them. However, they were suppressed from the beginning of the battle. Eleven bionic humans were basically invulnerable to their weapons. All kinds of light weapons were able to hit them without any injuries, and using large caliber weapons was only able to temporarily repel them. Therefore, when the battle started, the people of the Hugh family suffered a great loss without understanding the situation, and they suffered heavy casualties. Fortunately, the situation turned for the better soon, and the formidable attack of the bionic human was mysteriously interrupted. The Hugh family's side didn't know that it was because of the strong magnetic interference, so instead of taking advantage of this opportunity, they maintained their defensive positions. Even though the combat strength of the bionic human had been greatly reduced, these people didn't dare to rush over and fight back. As June's side was using heavy weapons to support the bionic human on the airship, they also attracted fire from the Hugh family. Although the airship was flying in the sky, its defense was very weak. In order not to be shot down, June emptied two magazines from her large weapon. Then she controlled the airship to fly higher. June could only try her best to avoid the range of the other party's shots. When June gave up on attacking the village and started to control the airship, her field of vision became wider. Although the periphery of the village was dark, Harry did not just throw one firecracker. He continued to throw firecrackers into the sky under Callie's help to expose their position, hoping to attract the attention of the airship in the air. However, what Harry did not expect was that the airship had attracted the monster in the ground. First, the ground shook violently, and a pile of dirt suddenly appeared on the ground, then quickly wriggled. Such a big movement naturally attracted Harry's attention. When he turned around, he was shocked. This thing came back. It's haunting me, Harry shouted. Callie saw that the pile of dirt was coming toward them. Needless to say, she knew that there was a terrifying monster under the pile of dirt. She decisively said, Use the big firecrackers that we tied together to blow it up. Under these circumstances, Harry did not have time to hesitate. He took out the big firecrackers that he had prepared beforehand from his backpack. He focused his attention and waited for the monster to come out of the ground and throw it into the gaping maw. Harry did not know why the monster attacked the three of them. There were so many people in the village, but it did not go over to such a big commotion. It had to go after Harry. The mound was still moving quickly. After a while, it suddenly stopped and became quiet again. Harry did not dare to lower his guard. This monster was huge and could still move in the ground. If he was not careful, he would definitely die without knowing how it happened. This kind of monster that could run underground was indeed not easy to deal with. Because of the cover of the ground, any attack would be powerless against it. Only at the moment when the monster broke out of the ground and launched an attack would it be effective in attacking its fatal weakness. Harry was waiting for this moment, for the monster to break out of the ground. However, the surroundings were still silent. After a while, Harry suddenly realized that the bag on his back had become lighter. This package contained a bag of superconductivity ores that he and Callie had collected. When they were in the previous underground space, they would float in the air. They could even carry people with their magnetism. However, after leaving the underground space, they would be like ordinary ores and become incomparably heavy once again. Moreover, they were much heavier than ordinary ores. Harry could hardly carry them. However, the ores on his back had inexplicably become lighter. Harry thought about it carefully and felt that this ore would only float when it encountered a strong magnetic field. It could only be explained by the sudden appearance of a strong magnetic field nearby, but there would be changes in the magnetic field, but it would not be so fast. Therefore, the only explanation was that the huge monster was currently under their feet. After this thought flashed through Harry's mind for a moment, he shouted, Dodge! 
After saying that, he pulled Callie and Little Muse up and jumped to the side with all his strength. Fortunately, the package on Harry's back not only became lighter, but it also started to float up, creating a pulling force. This way, even if Harry grabbed the two of them and jumped out, he would be able to leap a great distance. He used the power of the superconducting ore to jump a very long distance, and before Harry could jump out and land on the ground, the ground that he had been standing on seemed to have been blown up. A huge amount of earth and rock sprayed into the sky, and a huge figure drilled out of the ground. If they were a second late, Harry and the others would have been swallowed by this monster. After the monster came out of the ground, not only did it cause a huge tremor and roar on the ground, even the monster itself opened its mouth wide and howled toward the sky. The loud sound echoed in the surroundings, and even the intense sounds of battle in the village were suppressed. Everyone looked in the direction of the sound, and they were all stunned. The people of the Hugh family had never seen such a huge monster before. They had never even heard of it. They were all scared silly. They had even forgotten about the battle. They just stared blankly at the monster that broke out of the ground. As for the natives in the village, they directly threw down the weapons in their hands and knelt on the ground, continuously kowtowing. June also saw this scene from the sky. A huge black shadow came out from the ground. Its huge body was more than 20 meters long. What was more shocking was that the 20 meter long shadow was still exposed on the ground. As for what was hidden under the ground, that was even more shocking. No one could tell how long the beast actually was. Harry was not stunned. He had seen this monster before. Now, he held up the big firecrackers that he had prepared beforehand. After quickly lighting them up, he aimed at the monster